I'm going to show you how to create and upload your feed to Google Merchant Center in the easiest and fastest way possible. Let's see if we can save you days and days of pain in just five minutes. Let's go. Okay, so setting up your product feed and getting it into Merchant Center is one of the most painful things when setting up Google Shopping ads for your store. Let's skip all that pain right now and get you a good feed. Let's get into the Google Shopping campaign set up right now, but if this video is useful to you, please give it a thumbs up. That tells YouTube, hey, I'm making good content over here. Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to upload your product feed to Google Merchant Center. I'm gonna see how fast I can actually do this to make sure it's a really simple process for you guys. So here I have a stopwatch. I'm gonna start this and then let's go. Okay, so we're in Google Merchant Center right here and we want to upload our feed from Shopify in the easiest and quickest way possible. I'm gonna go onto the left and go to the, the menu here and go to feeds. And I'm gonna add in a new feed. So this is the new feed we're gonna have that's gonna take the products from Merchant Center, uh, from Shopify and put them in Merchant Center. So I'm just like country of sale. Yes, I'm gonna be in Australia, language, English, destination shopping ads, awesome. Okay, cool. Now I have to name the feed. So I'm just gonna put Shopify Google Sheets feed. This is the easiest way to create a feed really, really quickly. You can also create individual products that you upload. I've got another video that goes through this process. So check the description on that. That is a super easy way to do it, but you have to do each product individually. This gets all the products in one go. So we're going to make sure it selects Google Sheets. Click continue. The name doesn't matter too much. Just put something in there that makes sense. It's then going to ask me to sign in because it's gonna create this Google Sheets file, you need to have a Gmail address. And if you're using Merchant Center, you'll have one anyway. Okay, generate a new spreadsheet from template. That's exactly what we want, create feed. It's then gonna ask again for access to my Google Docs. That's fine, yes, yes, yes. Make sure you log in when you do this. Cool. Now it's loading. It has to create the whole Google Sheets file. Okay, fantastic. Now it's been created. And then we can open up our file, our Google Sheets feed here. So it has a bit of information here and it's got some links here you can go to, but it already has the columns which you need to fill in for each of your products. And we're gonna do that right now. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it just for one product, but you can do it for every single product. So we have this ready. So all we need to do is fill this in. I'm gonna to go to my Shopify site here. I'm gonna to go to products. And what I want to do is export all the products, select all products, plain CSV file is totally fine. This is going to export the product information. I only have one product in my store right now, but it's going to export all the products for your store into a sheet and it's going to get delivered to your email. So I'm going to open up my email right now. Here it is. So you get an email that's like this and it has the products export. You click that link, it's gonna then open up a new tab and then boom, downloaded all my products. Fantastic, you get something just like this, open it up in Microsoft Excel or whatever spreadsheet program you have. You can also drag it into Google Drive and then open it as a Google Sheet. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, what I like to do is actually, I'll go back here and I'm gonna make some room. So I don't wanna um, overwrite that information there. And I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna select all these columns here and I'm gonna paste these with a gap there. So what this does is pasting it now. Boom, actually I'm gonna paste it with values only so it doesn't take the formatting. Cool, so now that you'll see that we have what Google needs and what our store needs. So what I like to do now is go through and add these in to the right column. So for example, the body, that's the description there. So that can go straight under description. Title, title can go straight into title. Handle. This is basically the URL, uh, the ending of the URL in Shopify. I like to put that as the ID because that's really identifiable. The key thing is here, when you're creating your shopping campaigns and you split out your products based on um, in the product groups, this allows you to really easily see which products are performing well. This is the vendor here, that's gonna be the brand. Publish, that's because it's live. If some products aren't live and you've exported them all, you can filter by this and only show the ones that are live but you know we don't need that the sku you can also use that for the id i'm going to use that instead actually okay the variant price and the compare price okay cool so here the this is oh, this is a whole other thing this is um whole thing about using sale prices what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put the price in um if you're going to do a sale price 
I'll add it in anyway. So basically we need to put in compare at price. I believe that's the field. And then I'm going to put this here. Boop, 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 boop. So I'm going to, this basically means that Google shopping is going to show that this is the price, but then this is actually the, um, what it's going to be like on sale. Basically, let me just confirm this. Cause I can't remember. It's the exact one compare at price, um, should be Google shopping. So there's a lot of Googling that happens. Nope. I got it wrong. So Google shopping sell price. There it is. Awesome. Yeah, I was. That was it. So sale price. Cool. So that's going to have a compare price there. And if that is wrong, if something's a problem there, then Google's going to tell us once, once we try and submit the, the fee. Okay, cool. So now it's also, this is why there's multiple lines here because there's actual multiple images. And so this is um, Shopify's way of showing these all. So what I like to do is open these all up in new tabs. And I'm going to go through and choose which image I want to actually be the image in shopping ads. So I'm looking at them all now. Okay, I really like this one. So I'm gonna get everything before the question mark. We only want up to the JPG. Go back to the feed. And this is gonna be under image link, easy peasy. Okay, the actual link, that's gonna be my Shopify store URL and then the actual handle. Okay, so if my store URL um, is HTTPS, www. It's my URL is key surfer key surfers.com slash products slash and then it's going to be the handle and then i can just put that in here the easiest way to do that really is to just go to your site your products and then uh, click the oops i missed it and then click the the little uh view and then here that's going to show up see the same thing products and then it's got the handle key surfers.com products there it is yeah, it's the exact same. Awesome. So I can delete that. Don't need this. Don't need this. Is there anything else I need? Let me just have a look at this. So I got my description, my title condition. So it's going to be new. That's totally fine. It's new um, or used. Uh, this is going to be new or refurbished, but this is going to be new. Availability, that's going to be in stock. Easy peasy. Okay. Brand, that's fine. Google product category. This is really important. So I want to find the Google product categories. I'm going to leave a link in the description to these, but I'm going to go and uh, find them right now. Pull it over. So I'm going to find surf because this is, I'm just going to start searching for things that are related to um, my product. So surfboards, hmm, surf. Oh, this is going to be hard. Sometimes this gets hard. Okay. Well, there's 44. Go the kite surf. Ah, oh, here we go. Awesome. Surfboards. There it is. So it is 3320. You need to do this for your own products and each individual product. Add that in. That's really important to let Google know exactly what your product is and the, the category basically. It help, helps give them a lot more information. Okay, fantastic. Now, GTIN and MPN. Those are the last two ones. Really, you only need, as long as if you have your brand, you only need the MPN. GTIN, that's important if you're selling a product. Well, for example, like my product here is this S7 Superfish. So I'm going to go S7 Superfish 30 liters GTIN. I'm going to see if I can find this because if it's a product that other people are also selling, like it's an actual public sort of product, then it should have a GTIN. It's like the global identification number. Okay, no, so these don't have the GTIN. Okay. Um, da, 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 da. That might be, oh, that's some other product. Mm, it might not be, it might not exist. Let's have a look. Let's putting in these means that, oops. That basically means it's going to search for it as long as it has that. Oh, it's getting some aquariums and stuff. Oh, that's great. Anyway, I could dig for this for a long time, but basically, yeah, you got to find the GTIN. If you have to contact your supplier, that's what you can do. But then I'm going to add that in there. The MP MPN, that's kind of like the GTIN. It's the manufacturer product number that uh, you can often set that yourself. So it's totally fine. But it, often I'll set something like the SKU there and then use the brand. I I just want to get it approved and, and Google's okay with that. So that's what I'll use. So there we go. That's everything there for that. I like to go then delete all these columns here and boom, we now have our product feed there in Google Sheets. Now, this might not work. Let's see. Let's see how it goes because sometimes we're going to go in and fetch this feed and see if Google likes this. So what I did is I went back to the feeds here and I clicked on that Google shopping feed that I just created, the sheets feed. It's the same name as what I just created. And here it is. 
So no feed yet. If you've already uploaded your feed, wait a few minutes. To upload a new feed, click the three dots and select your upload. So don't worry about that because it's a Google Sheets feed. So we just click fetch now and then it's gonna go crawl that sheet and see if it can find the products. Boom, this feed is still being processed. So this takes a few moments now. I'm gonna refresh it probably in two minutes or three minutes. This, this bit, you just kind of have to wait for Google to go through, have a look. Oh, let's see, still being processed. Let me see if I can refresh. It's just one product, so it might be a quick one. Once it does get approved, once they do crawl it, it's gonna tell us basically, are there any errors? Is there anything we need to, are there any diagnostic problems, like warnings, errors, disapprovals? There's only one product, so it makes it really easy to just go Google the problem, find out what it is, and then adjust the feed. This is the benefit of the Google Google Sheets uh, method of doing this. The, the big problem is it's not gonna be dynamic. So what do I mean by that? Basically, if you change the pricing on your Shopify store or change anything here, it's not going to update in the feed. So you need to keep an eye on this and update it. Say if something goes out of stock, you need to update it here. Google do, do use their uh, automatic uh, improvements. Ah, here we go, awesome. So I must have messed up the pricing one. So it says invalid or missing required attribute price. So I have price there. So what might be the case, ah, of course, un um, unsupported currency. So whatever currency you use, you need to put in here the actual currency. So this is AUD. 599, let's see if this works. This might not be the right format, can't remember. <laughs> so let's see, uh, this is all just a process of getting it working. What you can do is go, okay, uh, Google Shopping Currency. And using the right, oh, let's do actually price. So you wanna Google the actual variable that we're using. There it is. And this will tell us exactly the format that they're expecting. Okay, awesome, so it should say, the amount, bullet point, or a decimal point, and then, then the actual currency amount. So this is AUD, it'll be USD of your USD. Canadian will be CAD. You have to work out what it is, depending on where you're actually selling this. Okay, awesome. So that's in there now. That may have processed already. I'm gonna f give it a fetch already. This is all part of the process of getting your feed approved. And it is a frustrating thing, especially when it's your first time, because Google's gonna spit out these errors to you and, and you'll be, you're gonna be like, oh, how do I fix this? Google's gonna be your friend. Just like what I did, I went to Google and I Googled price or currency. Ah, oh, boom, that's what we wanna see. Done, one item counted, zero items with issues. So we can go back to diagnostics over here. And it's gonna tell us, do we have any problems? And at the start, it's gonna be pending, okay. Cool, so it's gonna be disapproved. Okay, that was because I was testing something out before, but it's zero. We have to wait a little bit and it might say pending. And then after a day or two days, three days, sometimes it takes a while, it'll then become active and your ads will be good. So that's pretty much a full overview of how to set up your feed super quickly in Google Sheets. I hope that helps. I really recommend as well, checking out my other videos, especially on how to optimize your feed, because right now I added in, say for example, the title. That is a really bad title. The description, that's really basic. What you wanna do is spend a lot of time optimizing this title using certain formulas based on what niche your product is in. And I, in, in a video, I'll put it in the description about optimizing your product feed. I go through the different uh, formulas and I link to them, but as well, you wanna think about the language that your customers will use when they search for your products. So S7 Superfish 5.9 30 liters, that's what a lot of surfers will search with, the S7 Superfish, they know that. But you can also put uh, surfboard with green details or something like that that actually describes the product in more detail because some people might be searching for a green Superfish and then you wanna make sure you show for those searches. This is all part of improving and optimizing your feed, which is a whole, whole group of sphere of knowledge that, that you're gonna learn over time as you embark on this quest to improve your, your, your Google Merchant Center account and your Google Shopping campaigns. Anyway, that's how you set up your, your product feed super quickly. I did that in less than 15 minutes, which I would say is fantastic. Hopefully you followed along. If you have any questions at all, please leave a comment below. I read and answer every single comment across my channel and I'm always happy to help. So please leave a comment and I'll answer any questions I have. Apart from that, thanks so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if it was useful. If you want to see more tutorials just like this one, please consider subscribing to learn more about how you can grow your e-commerce store remotely. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.